Holy altered Parker, royal it? family photos. This is Flight Check Season 4, Episode 7. We're back one more time. Talking all aspects of FlyQuest. My name, as always, is Sandy Toes. And to my left and my extra left, my fellow hosts, Noxwar and Curly Double Q. Fellas, uh, I don't, I doubt you have that family photo pulled up right now, but, you know, go I ahead, <laughs> tag yourself in that photo. Which, which altered child are you? Uh, I think <laughs> I'm the, uh, I, I'm definitely the girl with, like, the sleeve who's, like, half- Whichever the youngest one is, yeah, by okay. default, that, I have to that be. That makes sense, yeah. Yeah, then, you know what, I'll just, I'll just take the middle one. That'll, I'll, I'll, ta I'll tag myself on that one. Perfect, yeah, yeah, the, the one in the middle. Uh, yeah, I'll take the, the edited sleeve. Uh, hey, besides all that, and trying to figure out exactly who our mom is and, uh, where she went, uh, it's been a great weekend for FlyQuest. Uh, FlyQuest certainly knows where their bread is buttered, uh, and who their queen is. And that queen, uh, would be, uh, any of the champions that Jensen busted out this weekend during the Azir disabling, um... Things are looking good for this team right now. LCS in general, fun finish to the regular season. Uh, it was very close at the end. Shopify Rebellion almost pulled out some crazy shenanigans. Oh, dude. Almost had it. I was rooting for them. I was so sad. And uh, so sad 100 Thieves was. continued to subvert expectations, uh, but not finish first. Uh, their tweets came a little too soon. I yeah, think. that was a that was a little Bit interesting. From sure that, that, was. that was a little premature, uh, if I do say so myself. So, we. I will mean, look, see... they need their two hours in the spotlight. It was fine. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, so we will see how playoffs shake out. Let's dive straight into LCS Week Six, uh, and I want to go straight to you guys, whichever one of you wants to take it first. What was the big, uh, big thing from the weekend that really stuck out to you? Uh, Smolder is officially busted now, mm. and it should just be picked or banned permanently. That's a great one. Knox, what about you? NRG does not look like they have any saving grace at all. I always yeah. thought there would be some form of saving grace, but they don't look like they have any saving grace whatsoever. So. Yeah. That's kind of my big takeaway. I really thought there'd be more there. Yeah, O three, 3 you know, after a strong week five, to be fair, we're, well, uh, hang on, strong's a tough word. Uh, a very close 2-0 that I'm not quite sure how they secured. But, right. Could yeah. have gone, <laughs> could have gone O two 2 easily in week five, then go O three 3 in week six, and then lose the tiebreaker. So technically... So O four. 4 They went O four 4 on Super Week, like... That is not a great place to be in. And I can't imagine that mentally things are really strong over there right now. Things have to be kind of worrisome over there, don't you think? I I mean, I would imagine a little bit. But also, at the same time, I know Doklo was, like, extremely sick this past okay, uh, yeah. week. Yeah. Right? I don't know, like, how much that plays into a factor of what was going on with the team and whatnot. But even then, I don't think he was sick the week in previous either, right? So, I I think it's more, it's got to be more than yeah. So I'm sure they looked way worse because of how Dokla was feeling, but there's something else going on with that team for sure. Yeah, for sure. I mean, look, when you cut down from a dozen coaches to however many they have now, it, it probably impacts the environment a bit. Like, I say that as kind of a joke, but, like, if you're able to divide responsibilities and have that many minds in the room, like, it probably was a major contributing factor to their success last year, you know? It's a huge support network for five players, which just kind of isn't there anymore. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, in particular, I'm looking at Cloud9. Uh, not the best 2-1 weekend I have ever seen. Uh, it They lost to Immortals on Saturday uh, and barely beat Shopify. Uh, on Sunday, while also taking down Dig on Friday. So, a weekend that, by all means, you would look at, and I believe we did, 
looked at it and said, this should be an easy 3-0 for this Cloud9 team that seems to be surging back. You know, they got the 2-0 in week five. They were looking better. Uh, and they managed to go 3-0, or they managed to go 2-1. Um, but I'm not necessarily sure that they are as strong as maybe people thought they were going to be preseason knocks. Obviously, we're not playing them round one in playoffs, but, I mean, how worried do you think 100 Thieves should be versus Cloud9? Uh, I don't think they're going to be overly worried, right? Because um, if I remember right, 100 Thieves is 2-0 over them. Uh, so No, it's a 1-1. Oh, is it 1-1? Okay. Um, either way, I think... I wouldn't be worried if I was either team, right? Like, I, I think both teams, and this is what's going to make this an exciting match. I'm very excited to talk about this with you all more in depth later. But I'm expecting both teams to really think, oh, yeah, we're the better team. 100 Thieves because they've been dominating all season long, and Cloud9 because they think 100 Thieves are frauds, right? And, like, everyone thinks 100 Thieves are frauds, but Cloud9 doesn't look good either. So going into this weekend, I have no no idea who's actually going to take this match and that's what makes it fun for me so uh mm. no i don't think either team's worried but i think they're both going to think that they can come away winning this which is why it's going to be extra hard when one of these teams ends up losing yeah that's a fair take curly how about you looking ahead to cloud 900 thieves i mean cloud nine again not the strongest finish to their regular season 100 thieves with a really strong 3-0 uh how should 100 Thieves be feeling about about this matchup? I think it's... Uh, I think 100 Thieves should be actually pretty confident because granted, this will be the first uh, professional best of five for a good amount of them, especially like first on stage best of five uh, for Sniper and Meech. Um, and so... And Quid, I believe. I don't remember if Quid made playoffs with 100 Thieves last year. But at the very least, like even two out of your five, that's a that's a good amount of your team, like on stage for their first best of five. So there might be nerves there and like the adaptability portion always comes into check. Um, and then while I was listening to pros today, that ended up being some of the conversation about this week and was like all these, you know, vets being like, I don't know, like if it's going to be up to snuff once you introduce best of five, you know, some things might go a different way. But at the same time, I have not seen the dominance from C9, this, this entire split, really, that you would expect to see from the squad. Mm -hmm. um, like, Jojo Pian has had his shining moments. Um, I'd say Vulcan is more of a does-his-job kind of thing when they give him the right, like, if as long as they have him on, like, an N-Gage or, like, an enabler, but, like, when you have him on something kind of like Nami where he's just kind of a bit more of a passive support, I don't see it as much. Um, Berserker has been cursed by an A. Uh, Fudge is not Fudge. Uh, like, the, he he's in the low cycle. If you have the circle of Fudge, this is the low part of the circle, you know? But does that mean um, that he's going to come back around for playoffs? No, it's coming back for summer. Okay. Um, yeah. If they make MSI, he might turn it on there, but I don't think they're going to. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, well, it'll be definitely interesting. Final two teams that I want to talk about, just playoff-wise, uh, we haven't touched on them yet, TL and Dig. Uh, Dig going 1-2 and two on Super Week, dropping to us in Cloud9, but beating TL... Uh, and I thought it looked pretty good during it as well. Um, Dig, to me, felt like... I, I would take Dig over NRG in a best of five right now. Uh, I don't know how you guys feel about that, but that's kind of my feeling on it. Um, I think they look stronger. They have consistently beaten the teams below them. Immortals, NRG, Shopify. Uh, they went 1-1 with TL this season. And now... To be fair, are they 0-2 to 100 Thieves, Cloud9, and FlyQuest? Yes, but that's just kind of like what you get when you're one of those middle-of-the-road gatekeeper teams. You beat the worst, and you lose to the best. Um, but I don't know. I, what are you, what are y'all's thoughts on Dig uh, and TL right now? TL also 
uh, going 2-1, and one, beating us and Immortals, but losing to Dig, like I said. Do you guys see TL and Dig kind of in that same echelon tier, or do you have one of them over the other? I mean, I would I... have... Go for, go for it, Curly, sorry. I low-key, and this is going to sound whack, I have Dig over TL. I think TL's wins are a bit... This is going to be the first time I use this all split. I think they're a bit fraudulent. Like, the only reason they've really truly won against us is because we let them have infinite scaling dragons. Like, mm. if you change that comp, we were ahead for a good amount of that game. It was just once we allowed Yon to get to those 225 stacks. Even then, it still wasn't that bad. But then once... um once APA was on, you know, dropping stars from the sky, like, then it was unstoppable, you know? So if you, like, don't let them have an infinite scaling draft, we go 3-0 this weekend. 100 Thieves never gets to pretend their first place for two hours. And so it's like, <laughs> granted, I still think they have a decent read on our team with the fact that they did pull out a comp like that. But against the rest of the league, I think, I, I, I don't think they're actually as deserving of that fourth place as they as they might think they are mm. interesting Knox, what's your any response to that um I'm, I'm looking at the rosters right and i would say that dignitas has yeah dignitas has three members in which i would rate better than uh team liquids that being the mid lane and the bot lane but then you have umti who i know um a lot of people have been kind of eh on, right? He doesn't look that good or he hasn't been able to execute all that well. Mm -hmm. But, like, at the same time, I'm, I'm speaking, like, kind of, uh, I'm paraphrasing from other, like, pros who have talked in interviews about Umti, like, inspired mainly, right? But apparently Umti is, like, always in the right place at the right time. I, I can't comment on it too much because I haven't seen every single Team Liquid game. Um, so, in that regard, it sounds like he's kind of done a better job than XU, who I thought has actually had a solid split, but it, sound, it sounds like he's been the better jungler. But then you also have Impact, who I think far out clears Rich. Mm -hmm. The problem then becomes, though, Dignitas does not have any cohesion when it comes to mid and late game. And that's kind of where a lot of their games fall off. If you notice, and you, you can go look this up on Oracle's Elixir, right? Um, they have some of the best early game stats in the league. Not the best, but some of the best. And then they very quickly have bad mid game and bad late game stats. And so that'll kind of be what this uh, series... Uh, well, not series, I guess, they're not playing, but, like, comparison between the two teams is, like, could you out-macro Dignitas later on in the game? If yes, take the win. If you cannot, then you're probably either Immortals or Shopify and not in playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> and then for, for Team Liquid, it's a matter of um, can you outpower uh, or not, uh, can you outpower them? Because, like, I think the only other person that you're not going to beat like in terms of individual prowess is impact mm -hmm. everyone else i think is fairly beatable right and if you can get bleeds in lane versus like uh apa yon core jj like i think you're fine because like they're while the cohesion mid game is okay um like i think i think they're kind of vulnerable in the early game so that's kind of my general thoughts on it overall i, w I would say i probably lean a little more towards team liquid because mid to late game are a little more important than early game you can always recover a little bit in those stages of the game but like it's close yeah no i think that's a that's a really fair take i think for me i i do agree with curly that i have dig over tl uh right now uh, i've just when they win i like how they win better than uh, how I've seen TL play in recent weeks. I just don't think TL has it together yet. Um, and I'll be interested to see how they do in playoffs. If they don't perform in playoffs, I'll be interested to see what they do in between spring and summer. Certainly plenty of rumors flying around over what they could possibly do. Um, but it will be interesting. Let's tackle FlyQuest. To... Oh, the, the last the last thing I'll tack on is actually we may see this matchup as long as FlyQuest beats TL. Yeah. Because TL's the lowest seed, Dig will probably get them because they get rewarded, quote unquote, as being the higher of the two seeds between them and NRG. So right. we actually may see that matchup. Right. So, I would love to see that. Right. NRG basically plays the highest seed that drops out of upper bracket. Which is most likely 100 Thieves or Cloud9, which that is also a banger matchup. Yeah. 
so yeah, we will see how that goes. Uh, certainly will be interesting. Um, all right, let's tackle FlyQuest. So a 2-1 uh, weekend for us, dropping to TL on Friday before bouncing back to beat NRG in a banger, uh, and then took care of business against Dignitas on Sunday in a much more straightforward matchup. Uh, the TL game, and to another extent the NRG game, uh, I felt the issues came where, and honestly, I'm just going to say it, in the Dig game too, bot lane was a pain point for me this weekend. Where yes. when they fall behind early, or they struggle in lane, or they're not coordinated, Inspired has to spend his time helping them along instead of being able to farm, gank other lanes, get Jensen ahead, get Whippo ahead, things like that. For me, looking into playoffs versus a TL, and we'll get to the actual series preview in a bit, but just looking into going up against Jan JJ, Masu and Busio, in my opinion, really need to step it up in the early game phase. And early game, I think, was the big issue for me this weekend. Uh, how about you guys? Uh, no, I would 100% agree. Uh, our laning... Mm -hmm. um, like, it's kind of a mix of both players. It's not even just one of them, right? Busio and Busio both have issues in lane and have both been repeatedly punished by various other bot lanes. Um, so, yeah, no, I, I'm hoping and expecting to see them step it up a notch and really start performing in lane because outside of lane, I think for the most part, they've been okay, right? There yeah. hasn't been any like, egregious errors, but in lane, they kind of been getting set behind a little bit, which has been frustrating to see. Right. Curly, how about you? Thoughts on the weekend's performance? Yeah, I mean, like, the bot lane really kind of, these last two weeks, like, after the break, something felt like it's happened to the bot lane. They're not performing up to the hype that I had for, like, the first half of the split. Um, and I think it's part of actually something that we have talked about um, while... Nox had his very long MVP stream on Thursday is it has to do a bit with FlyQuest game plan because we do a lot of play for late game, you'll win in the LCS. And by doing that for a lot of the split, now all teams have actually taken the time to study how to do that um, or like how to address that, which is how we get into Friday situation against TL. Like they were like, all right, we're just going to do what you do better and disable your entire bot lane. Um, and granted, Draft wasn't in our favor, but like even so, like mechanics, like it or the way laning phase turned out, I wasn't not happy right now. But I'm sh I'm sure they've talked about all that, you know, sure. in the in the locker room, in the computer room, whatever you whatever in, they have in the lab, <laughs> in the lab. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I, I would agree. Um, and yeah, let's talk about uh, that Friday game, the that loss in particular. Um, cause to me, this one felt like not so much a player issue. Well, I mean, the bot lane was an issue early, but ultimately straight I felt draft. like we were hindered by the comp. Yeah. The, yeah, just straight draft. I, we lost in draft. I, dude. I hate this comp. Uh, there's, you've got really one form of engage in the Rakan, right? And if the Rakan doesn't succeed there's no follow-up sure you've got like you know the gotta go fast comp of Sivir and karma and you can speed up but to me that's just kind of a hey we're already ahead and we're gonna run them down over and over and over again and you have to be able to get ahead early if you're gonna do that and that just simply did not happen um yeah Smolder well, the other thing right absolutely dominated the the combo of like the Smolder ulti and the Asol ulti, by the way, uh, devastating. Uh, a dev Jeez. multiple devastating moments uh, in this game. But yeah, I I really hated this comp, starting with the Karma. Um, 
Zero percent win rate in the LCS. Starting no team comma, should pick this champ. And Wait, ending, does it actually have zero percent? Yes, zero percent win rate. It's out worse of than, five. Uh, it's worse than Lucian, actually. Unironically. Yeah. <laughs> out of the five um, games that it's been picked, of which I believe we are two, it has not won a single one of them. And that's because, like, Karma as a mid laner, like we've talked about it in some other discords, Karma as a mid laner, not bad. It's actually really good. Just not the way that LCS teams want to play it. It's like, and, and then especially, I don't think it's a champion that we should give to Jensen to have him do the things we need him to do. Yeah. You know? Yep. Because oh, he can handle wow. it fine-ish in laning phase because that's he's actually just a really good laner in my opinion. Like, not very susceptible. But once you get outside of that, I don't see much utility that you're supposed to be seeing from this yeah. karma. Yeah, that's crazy. I had no idea it was zero and five. Yeah, that's <laughs> wow. Yeah, that I have a vendetta against this pick. <laughs> this and Aatrox are my two least favorite solo lane picks of the entire season. Okay, I wasn't expecting the Aatrox there. Uh, but yeah, starting with what the Karma you... and then ending with the Siver. You know, Siver looking to scale for the late game, get that third, fourth item. Uh, and I just don't think. I just don't think this was it. I hope we never see this comp again. Uh, I hope we never see Jensen on Karma again. Not because I think Jensen, like, played bad. I just don't think he had... He was going to be able to do anything in this game, ever. Um, yeah. Uh, the Jace really struggled. Uh, yeah, it was just a bit of a mess all around. Um, I don't know what the thought was there. Yeah, I mean, Nox, do you have any final thoughts on this comp? Because I, I think we're all in agreement that it's like, sure, there were some execution errors early, but it was ultimately comp that prevented us from coming back or even getting close to victory in the first place. I, I um, For me, I don't think it's so much on our end. Well, don't get me wrong. The order in which we drafted our stuff was not good, right? Like, especially the B3... Uh or B4, uh, or God, R4, excuse me, the R4 Siver, um, that was what really, like, put the nail in the coffin, right? Because, basically, TL saw that. They already had uh, the Smolder picked, mm -hmm. and we already had Karma picked, and so it, APA was just like, oh, it's the easiest ASO angle ever. Just, we can, like, they're kind of going scaling with the Karma and Siver, which, it, those are scaling picks, right? But, like, Smolder and ASO immediately, like, you, in your head, you should automatically think, oh, yeah, two best scaling picks in the game. Mm -hmm. They're going scaling. Okay, well, they're not going to be able to push their lead that hard. I'll just outscale them even harder and come to the 25-minute mark when we both have the enough stacks. Like, they just won't win fights. That's all that it is. Mm -hmm. I think all that it really should have been is if you were going to uh, save, like, the last pick for, uh, like, Sivir and then top lane because you're trying to get, like, that top lane counter pick, I... Like, I don't know what the Jace does here. I just, it's the Jace and the Sivir are the biggest issues for me. I think the Karma, Jin Zhao, and Rakan are fine. But the moment you pick that Sivir there, like, I don't think you can do it. That's something you have to save for that R5 just to see what else they've uh, folded in there. Because mm -hmm. you needed something a little more aggressive to actually push the game forward a little bit. Because Sivir's not coming online until you have, like, three or four items on her. And then mm -hmm. it's, yeah, she's a pain in the butt. But I don't think you're ever going to beat a smolder and a soul in that sense. So I, my biggest, my biggest defender is at Sivir. That that's all that, that really is. You can maybe do that on R5. You can't do that on R4. Yeah, no, I think those are some really good points. Um, so tough loss there bounce back the next day in a long banger game versus NRG 44 minutes going the distance. Uh, and I... this one was close. <laughs> Because we had, we were doing really well, and then we almost gave this one away. Um, contracts snuck in and stole a Baron. Uh, again. <laughs> again. Uh, and yeah, things were rough. I will point out, in the two wins versus NRG and Dig, Jensen, on the Talia and the Huey... Uh, a 7-2-10 and 6-2-9. and nine. So mm -hmm. if, if you just take out that karma... Uh, hang on, I have multiple arguments here. If you take away the karma, he had a great weekend. Add in the karma, and 
in my mind, the arguments about, oh, Jensen's, yeah, Jensen's champ pool, he only plays Azir and Orianna. I mean, what, what are those people looking at? Here he is dominating on two other champs. What are you looking at, Knox? <laughs> what are you looking at, Knox? I, I don't think... I, I uh, have Knox no was, comments currently. Knox was never saying, like, you know, oh, he only plays two champs. I mean, it's other people who, you know... It's, it's other people who don't know how to, like, you know, use their eyes correctly. Um, here he is, playing, like, two other champs and absolutely dominating on them. Uh, <laughs> like, I am not concerned about, oh, the Azir no. global ban. And, you know, you could kind of see it, like... I'm sure you guys saw the uh, <laughs> the little uh, oh, breaking news. Uh, you know, Azir is banned. Uh, Jensen, what do you have to say? He's like, oh, Azir is banned. Oh, we're screwed. We're, we're, you know, we're not. <laughs> and uh, and you know, it's very clearly. <laughs> and then even in the interview, I think it was. Uh, I think it was the Saturday interview, maybe. Um, yes. Because they asked him about the Azir thing. He's like, yeah, I only know how to play two champs. So, you know, we didn't know what we were going to do. Like, clearly, like, he knows the joke, but it doesn't affect him, and it's not true. So I am right here, uh, 8.33 p.m. on March the 11th, 2024. Uh, I am putting to rest the Jensen champion pool issue topic. Uh, it is closed. Uh, the man can play other champs. We know this to be true. We witnessed it this weekend. Uh, it is mm -hmm. not a question for me uh, at all. Yeah. Uh, all right. Now that I've gone on that little rant, let's talk about the NRG yeah. game. Wild banger game. <laughs> any any thoughts on that game from either of you? I want FlyQuest to pl uh, pay my medical bills for my next checkup for the increased heart rate um, and the high cholesterol I got from that game. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, but like it, it was, it was like actually kind of frustrating when they did start to give away the game a little bit because um, I was hanging out with my friends in the, my living room and you know they were playing Smash and I just started yelling at the screen because I'm like, bro, why are you taking this fight and all this stuff? Like, why are you do? Why are you here? Why are you doing that? We don't need to chase us down. Why are we? My biggest issue was when we kept falling for the bait of like trying to rush down who he first because like mm. that literally a week ago was one of the reasons they got a comeback was because teams kept hunting him for no reason hunting down the four thousand um, health nautilus yeah yeah like don't you don't hunt hunt him down but eventually it worked and it was fine but yeah i i, I would like it if we reel it in from the handing away games and playoffs mm -hmm. yeah Knox, any any thoughts from you uh this game to me just kind of felt like we were limit testing a little bit. Just like how how loose can we play and still get away with some of the stuff? Like, because NRG is not a consistent team right now, and so for me, it just it almost it did it not feel like a scrim game to y'all a little bit. Oh, looked very scrim. Uh, I mean, to the extent that scrims go forty minutes, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Obviously, like most scrims don't go that long, right? But I mean, just in the sense of just like throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks and like, Hey, can we make this play here? And like it, it just felt super swingy and it just felt very, uh, Hey, we're already locked into playoffs. Yeah. Let's just kind of, let's just chill a little bit, chill in the sense of like, we'll just try some stuff. That's what this game felt like to me. And so I, I mean, don't get me wrong. It, it didn't, uh, reinforce any faith in the team off of it. Right. But like, it didn't necessarily make me worried much either if that makes sense like i'm just right. i'm kind of writing it off as it is what it is especially after um i mean don't get me wrong the early game of dignitas was not good but like they kind of locked it down towards the mid game and just really right. closed it out from there so th that's why i'm not too worried about the team off of that energy game yeah and yeah and i think we can segue straight into the the dig game from there i don't think there's a ton to talk about here this one was a lot more straightforward uh senna tom kench uh, for the bot lane, Inspired gets to power farm with the Graves. Um, Whippo gets to run around on Udyr. Uh, and, you know, Dignitas did put up a fight. They did look better early, especially in the bot lane, which, again, I just say, you know, is the pain point, I think, from the weekend. Uh, but, you know, after those early mistakes, 
I mean, bot lane ends with the following KDAs. 3, 1, 12, and 1, 2, and 13. So, okay, they struggled early, sure. But did they finish like Tomo and Isles, who went 6, 4, 3, and 0, 5, 7? No. In fact, they did far superior to that. And, you know, took their early disadvantage and made something out of it. And I think that is commendable. Uh, let's just not get in the disadvantage in the first place from now on. I, I, I will also lend a little bit of defense to Masu and Busio. I don't know where you guys have Tomo and Isles ranked in terms of bot lanes, but I actually have a lot of respect for them. Like, at least in lane, they are one of the better bot lanes in the LCS. So yeah. I actually l hope that FlyQuest is scrimming Dig uh, fairly often and getting them practice in lane because I think they're, which is wild, you would have never predicted Tomo and Isles to be like one of the best bot lanes in the LCS, right? But like they are. And so I, I hope they're actually getting scrims against them so that way they're getting good practice against these guys in lane because I think it'll help Masu and Busio a lot. Well, if you are, I will say, if you are solely going off of um, but, 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 like fantasy points, Tomo is ranked two for bot lane. Wow. Oh. Okay. And Isles is ranked nice. ranked number three. Dang. Yes, okay. Now I don't know if that is inflated because Sleeper has not. Um, it's still counting the uh, tiebreaker game from yesterday that they played, unfortunately. But nevertheless, I think even if you like take that away, uh, Tomo is still going to be a top half of the league AD carry. Uh, and Isles is still going to be a top half of the league support. So you've got a top four bot lane, no matter which way you slice it. Um, it in my opinion, of course, you know, fantasy points aren't everything, but I, I think they reflect some truths, you know. So just makes me happy to see him in the top four. He he's he he will always be FlyQuest alumni to me. I'm just happy to see him. Succeed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That is for sure. I mean, hey, he did win his first LCS game yeah. uh, with FlyQuest, so. True. It's Came true. in, and it, to this day, he still holds the record for most damage done as a rookie. Ah, yeah. What a man. What a man. All right, let's hop into next week. Big week. Big, big week. Games Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, so there's a big lot happening. Big weekend for LCS. Yeah, huge weekend. Um. 100 Thieves Cloud 9, Thursday, FlyQuest TL, Friday. Uh, best remaining seed plays NRG on Saturday. Uh, and lower remaining seed plays Dignitas on Sunday. You know, crazily enough, you could have a weird scenario where FlyQuest loses, and then they play again the next day, another best of five uh, versus NRG. That is very possible, um, which is... Would be a weird scenario, but... Would be a very weird scenario. Could occur. Um, let's talk about 100 Thieves and Cloud9. First, uh, just very briefly, how are you guys feeling about this series? I don't know what way I'm to go. So excited for this. I'm so excited for because this I don't know what way to go either. <laughs> because, like, we've been seeing so much, like good stuff from 100 thieves and cloud nine has not looked good and now here we are and they're about to go into a best of five and we don't know what the best of five is going to look like uh from the 100 thieves side right they might actually struggle in the best of five um so yeah i'm i'm very very interested to see how this goes Knox, i'm going to ask you first what way are you leaning on this Hundred Thieves Cloud Nine matchup? Uh, I'm I'm gonna catch some shit from Hundred Thieves fans, but I I'm leaning Cloud Nine. I'm I'm predicting a three two in favor of Cloud Nine. Uh, the whole point that everyone, every pro, every analyst, er, everyone behind the scenes outside of Hundred Thieves fans and Hundred Thieves staff are saying that this team's fraudulent and they're going to get exposed in actual best of fives when like. You get called out on your strategies and how you want to play the game. And so I don't think Cloud9 is all that good, though. And so I think 100 Thieves is still good enough to uh, skill check them. Like, Sniper's been rolling people over in the lane. River's been one of the best junglers. 
Quid has been one of the best uh, mid laners, and against JoJo, that'll be a g- great matchup, right? Uh, it, it's all of these things combined that's like it's going to make it a close series, and that's what's so so exciting for me, right? Mm-hmm. So I just think Cloud Nine at the end of the day is going to come out on top because I got I got to leave some I I got to lend some credence to like all these pros and analysts saying that hundred thieves are frauds, like mm-hmm. it because it's not just some people saying it, like it is almost everyone's saying it like yeah. they are not that good mm-hmm. and so i at some point someone's going to call them out on how they're playing and what other team to do it than cloud someone clip that and send it to david shinick right now please <laughs> <laughs> throw me under the bus like that absolutely curly it seems like I've... you don't agree uh with Knox. Here. no i uh i i think this is going to be a very spicy best of five uh this weekend um, but I think this is the moment where 100 Thieves silences people who are calling them frauds. Um, and like, at least against Cloud9, because Cloud9 should not have lost um, the game, like their game to Immortals. And they almost lost to Shopify this weekend. Like, mm-hmm. if they were really back, like they said they were the week before um, and didn't, like, I still think their win against us was us try new things against a mid team. Like I firmly believe that I don't see them pulling it together for a best of five, you know, whereas hundred thieves has just been consistently proving everyone wrong. And I don't think that's going to stop until we beat them somewhere along the line. You know, I think we are going to be the ones to check them again. And honestly for us, I think it would be a better scenario based on how I assume our predictions are going to go. Cause if hundred thieves does win and we win, that means we get to face them next week and we've beaten them twice. We can beat them three more times. That's going to be easy. Mm. So I'm both hyped for them and looking out for us, you know? Yeah, I I think it's going to be a very revealing series ultimately. Yeah, you're 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 the tiebreaker here, Sandy. Who who what, what way are you leaning? Oh man, um, I think Hundred Thieves is going to surprise with how well they play. In the best of five, I think that Cloud9 will ultimately take it, though. Oh, there it is. Okay. That was that was such a baity start. I could feel it coming. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think Cloud9 will ultimately take it. I think, and, you know, when I talk, like, when we talk 3 3 one 3 2 for me, that's more of, like, how close I think the series is going to be rather than, like, specific game score, usually. So, like, I think it's, like, a 55-45 Cloud9 right now. I think Cloud9 will get it, but I don't think it's going to be dominant by any means. Um, 100% agree. And and if 100 Thieves were to win, I'm not going to be sitting here absolutely aghast and shocked out of my mind. I'm going to be pleasant, maybe, like, pleasantly surprised, but not, like, shocked. Um, I think the one thing we can all agree on based on our answers is we're going to hear Silver Scrapes on Thursday. I think Silver Scrapes is very possible. So all, all three of us are on board with the Game 5 happening, which I, I, I'm yeah. excited for. Yeah. All right. Well, now we get to turn it over to the FlyQuest portion of the playoff preview. So let's hit that. Uh, and the results Ooh. are in. Uh, and I see Ooh. with my eyes... Oppenheimer. I mean, uh, the predictions <laughs> from uh, from uh, the most cluttered graphic I've ever yeah, made. Hang on. I actually, I gotta like scrunch this down a little bit. All right, there we go. Wow, I didn't even realize it was over. Yeah, Damn. Yeah. All right, there we go. <laughs> uh, so we are all going with the three-one FlyQuest over TL. I'm the only one who says game two goes to TL, uh, which like. I'm only saying that because I just know how these series go. It's like FlyQuest wins one, TL gets one back, and then FlyQuest closes it out. Um, that's just my take. Uh, I I know we just lost to TL on Friday, which is ultimately why I am giving them the one win. But I think that game, just in terms of like, uh, how it reflects on how this playoff series will go. Uh, I think it's marred by how bad our draft was, and I don't think we will draft like that again. 
Uh, we beat TL pretty handily the first time we played them. Uh, and I think we have only gotten better since then. And I think they have not improved, um, frankly. So right now, yeah, I've got FlyQuest in a 3-1. Uh, you, you guys also with the 3-1, but I'd like to hear your takes on why and wherefore. I'll let you kick this one off, Knox. I'm going with game three being the loss just because I don't know. Like I'm it, it's just a vibe pick, honestly. I have no I have no reason <laughs> why it's going I just had a feeling it'll be the just one. Uh yeah, I, I'm I'm throwing the card at a dartboard right now. If you want some basis behind it, uh I feel like at after being up two O, um TL is going to probably pull out like a draft or something where it's just like, okay, we're really hard scaling. And then maybe we don't respect the Ziggs ban or something like that. And they, <laughs> it slips through the cracks. It's like, okay, here's your little check. Game four, close it out. That's that, that's the one little bit of basis I'll give you. Outside of that, I, I just was throwing darts at a dartboard. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, totally. Um, no, I think that's very fair. Uh, Curly, how about you? I think um, game three, right, is this is more the momentum of how the series is going to go because we're going to start out strong. There's no way we lose game one. We all agree on that. Um, game two, we're going to keep it up, and there's going to be like a certain thing that they let slip twice in a row that they're like, all right, we're not letting it slip that time, and that's the linchpin in our plan for those games. So we have to adapt, and maybe we don't cook right, and then also like losing game three makes them think, oh, is there a chance of a reverse sweep? Could we go to five games if they win the next one just to stomp all that hope in the next game with an all out like, no, we're the better team. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm predicting storylines here. You know, this isn't about gameplay. This is about building up their hope for a fleeting moment to crush it and send them down to face Dignitas. Mm. That is my feeling as to what's going to happen. No, I, I think, uh, yeah, that'll be. I, I'm in complete agreement. I, I'm not really concerned about how the series is going to go. Uh, the only thing I am concerned about is that there is a drive episode for Masu that is out. Uh, and I'm concerned well, about out, out the... Tomorrow. It's not out. It's coming out at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Uh, it's coming out tomorrow. Uh, so I'm concerned about how uh, that'll look uh, and uh, what that'll do to curse us uh, going into playoffs. So that's my only concern. I don't know why you brought it up. I don't know why you did that. If I speak it... to it more and more and more, it will not have an effect. There will be no factor. You know, that's just... That's how it works. You have to understand. What what, what is the percentage breakdown on drive curses actually being curses? Do that we, is we a number like, that I, I do not have, but I would. I know I'm it's sure. high. We'll have to I look into it, it over the next couple of days. Like I'm, I'm very confident in the fact that it's like actually over fifty percent. I just don't know what the percentage actually is. Yeah, I've got, uh, I've got no clue on that one. Um, but no, I, th I think it'll be good. Uh, all right, so we've got a bit of a dilemma here. Why well, uh, we don't actually, because we all think TL is going to drop down. So we think that they will be playing um, Dignitas. Dignitas, and either Cloud Nine or Hundred Thieves plays NRG. Uh, I feel like we can all agree that loser of Cloud Nine Hundred Thieves will beat NRG uh, on yeah. Saturday. I feel yeah. I feel very confident in saying that. I don't think energy really has anything to offer right now. I don't think they look good, uh, and I think they need to retool uh, for summer, for summer split. How about you guys? There's a uh, there's something in the water over there. It's it's not looking good, and I don't. It, it would have to be a miracle turnaround within a week for them to take down either 100 Thieves or C9, in my opinion, because even though I'm not that hot on C9, I, I still am higher on them than I am NRG. I think I'm going... Don't get me wrong. I think, yes, you're correct that no matter who NRG plays this, I think NRG will lose. However, I I have faith in them to go down scrapping. Like mm. I don't know. Like I, There's something not right over there. They don't have something figured out. They're Players aren't playing the best right now, but 
contracts alone with the way he's pulling off these stupid barren steals that he should not be getting away with makes me think like it's still going to be a scrappy series no matter how how you look at it so um yeah 100 thieves or cloud nine either way it's fine but do not be surprised if energy pulls out some magic all right yeah i mean we can we'll see how it goes uh, and then on the other side, if we're assuming the TL Dig series, uh, I really want to know how you guys feel about this one. Because um, this one intrigues me the most. I have... I'm going to have Dig. Um, well, you, yeah. you both favor Dig, right? I, I, yeah, I, I'm you, in agreement there. I think we there. both favor Dig. Curly, uh, is it like a 3-1 for you? A 3-2? I, I think it's probably going to be a 3-2. Yeah. Uh, that's just my take. Where do you land on it? I, I think that one's almost like a... That's another 55-45 for me where... Like, yeah, if TL close. has a... If TL flips the coin the right way, they could steamroll Dig. But Dig could also perform really well uh, and beat TL. Yeah. So I'm curious to see where you land uh, on it. I mean, they are even on the head-to-head -head this split. So that 55-45 is mathematically a safe bet. Um, however, I just think like Diggs had a bit of a ramp up towards the end of a season that's mm -hmm. been quietly like I, I haven't seen it acknowledged too much. Like they've just quietly climbed up the ranks to fifth mm -hmm. place, you know, just did it. Um, and I'm a big fan. Like I, I get behind momentum a lot. And so if you, I see more momentum from Dignitas, um, especially considering they did just beat Team Liquid. So in their most recent bout, they showed that they are the better team. Um, and then they, you know, won the tiebreaker against NRG. So once again, showed that they were the better team. So I think like they can keep that momentum going. Um, I could even see a 3-1. I'm hesitant to lock in a prediction for that quite yet. Um but I, I still, I'm more favorable on Dignitas here. And then especially, like, there's a chance that losing to us demoralizes TL a bit more than I think they're demoralized. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Which could play into things. Oh, no. Yeah, uh, that's fair. Uh, Nox, how about you? Uh, what's your what's your take on things? I, I will be the contrarian on this. I, I'm going to back TL. I think that they have a far more uh, concrete understanding of how to play the mid game and late game, even if their players are throwing it APA. Um, yeah. I don't have a lot of faith in like Dignitas's mid to late game. And at the end of the day, this is a team based game. And if you one team is playing the mid and late games better as a team than the other, I have faith in TL to be able to close it out. Even if their players are making really, really dumb mistakes. Mm. So over the course of a five-game series, I am going to lean towards DL. Yeah. I, I mean, I think it's fair. Like I said, I think it's definitely a 55-45, so... Uh... It, it's close. Like I said, I'm it, it, this match and the 100 Thieves Cloud 9 match are the two matches I'm, like, expecting, quote-unquote, right? Because right. we don't know if this can actually occur. But the, it's the two matches that are not the finals that I'm most excited for. Yeah. I think it'll be really good. Uh, so it definitely promises to be a great weekend. Uh, so we'll be sure to pay attention to everything that goes down this weekend. You know what else is going down? Uh, or hang on. You know what else is going down but staying up? FlyQuest NACL staying up at number one in NACL. Looking real good as they do it too. Finishing the season eight and one. Uh, in we did drop of... into Supernova. I was I was wrong on that one. Yeah, yeah, we we did drop, but staying number one. Uh, ultimately, having the tiebreaker over Maryville. Uh, yeah, the two one drop to Supernova. Uh, unfortunate ruins the perfect season. Uh, but you know, say la vie. What can you do? Um, I don't believe. The bracket has not been revealed, but I assume that they'll be you, playing. You first eight. Yeah, area of effect. Yep. Uh, in the first round, uh, and that'll be. They have not released the schedule yet. I don't think so. I don't know. Uh, it is this also Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, I, I just it, it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday for round one, and then the first matches of round two are on Sunday. 
uh but i do not know um which of those days FlyQuest challengers plays on it does not say on lolpedia yeah so oh man i'm just now looking at the time frames it is 7 p.m and 10 p.m start times yeah. for central time yeah yeah <laughs> 8 8 and 11 p.m eastern time so if they are the 11 o'clock uh i will not be watching uh it's a bit Ooh, early. Uh, that is rough that that's some rough for viewership um yeah, I, I guess they, they have to do it after lcs is done but yeah good lord so they should uh no matter what they'll play two best of threes this weekend uh they'll have their first one versus aoe and i assume a win here i assume a 2-0 frankly um there should be a 2-0 i think they should be able to take that and then if the bracket is the way i would expect it to be they would play the winner of wild card and cincinnati fear and I'm a little more concerned on this one. Obviously, we did beat both those teams in the regular season, but Knox, assuming the AOE win, and assuming that I am correct on my assumption on how the brackets are going to go, uh, are you concerned at all about Wild Card or Cincinnati Fear? I personally am a little more wary of Cincinnati Fear than Wild Card currently. Wild Card kind of fell off towards the end a little bit. Like, don't get me wrong, they're still a threat 100%. Yeah. But uh, I, I I think fear is far more scary than wild card currently is. Um, so, yeah, no, there, there's someone that I think you should still absolutely keep an eye on and you need to do your prep work for. Um, honestly, it, it's funny because it's like these teams are four and five, like fourth place through seventh place all the way down to disguise. All of them are four and five, but mm -hmm. I would say Wildcard and Cincinnati are definitely teams that are like higher than what they're standing to show. So, um, yeah, keep an eye out on those two teams, and then we'll we'll go from there. I, I think I have faith no matter what. It's not until you get to about the Supernova Maryville late level where I like start worrying like, okay, we could actually lose them. Well, that's what I was going to ask you next. Was to me, it feels like Maryville and Supernova are our main competition in these playoffs and that yeah 100%. i feel confident in beating anyone from fourth through like fourth place through eighth place but it's maryville and supernova that keep me awake at night so what can we do to beat these teams uh presumably like, like i don't think it's going to be in the early rounds because if the bracket is set up properly and they win their opening matches, they will play each other in round two. Um, and then if, presuming, of course, that we win rounds one and two, we would face either of them in round four. Uh, and then the loser would be down to uh, round two in the lower bracket, where I assume they'll probably sweep their way on through. Um, so what can we do in this you know, upper bracket to stay alive, not drop to lower bracket early, uh, like FlyQuest Challengers has been prone to do uh, in years past. Um, yeah. What can we do to stay alive and ultimately get the dub uh, in these playoffs? I, I think it's just really, really important. A, Surdy's not having any happy games. Uh, it's kind of been the one thing throughout this whole split is He'll have the occasional happy game where it's just like, oh, he's like 0 and 10, but he's still, he is like contributing to the game still, funnily enough. But it's like, you can't be having those kind of games in playoffs. Like, you need to be like stepping up every single time and showing up and like actually doing the work. Um, other than that, like, Quad has been far and away one of the best mid laners in the uh, NACL, so I'm not too worried about him. Uh, Sajid and Chime, I think, have just been a solid bot lane, not the best bot lane. So I'm hoping to see them level up a little bit and actually, mm -hmm. like, hey, it's playoffs time. We got to crack down. We got to actually do our homework on uh, these other bot lanes. Mm. And if all that happens, then I'm not worried at all. Because um, I think the other thing is Shaden has still been one of the best junglers in the, LC in the NACL as well. Okay. Yeah, I think, um, I think the team ultimately very, very strong. I'm not concerned about them in these opening rounds, but yeah, it is definitely, so we get on towards later and hopefully finals, that I will be biting my teeth, or biting my uh, nails. Uh, biting, <laughs> biting, my your teeth. Teeth. Well, biting your teeth. Biting your teeth. Welcome, welcome to the new quote club, yeah, Sandy. Don't forget to bite your teeth. Uh, <laughs> more flight check misquotes. <laughs> more flight check misquotes coming from the hosts of flight check misquotes. Um, 
hey, you know. When we, you hit your head on the nail. Yeah, hit, hit the head on the nail. And you bite teeth. your teeth. with. <laughs> bite your teeth. Uh, all right, we'll be adding that one. Uh, that one's good. <laughs> no, it, you know. Don't ask Knox about combines. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. We don't need to bring that one up. Hey, so anyone watch up. Dune lately? Uh, because <laughs> <laughs> that fits right on in. Um, all right, let's move forward. Final topic of the evening. Uh, FlyQuest Valorant, FlyQuest Red, uh, taking part in Game Changers North America event number one over the weekend. Uh, and doing pretty well in it, all things considered. Um, oh, yeah. Finishing second place, uh, picking up 50 circuit points in the first of three uh, series uh, that they are in. I don't believe, unfortunately, that um, doing so well automatically qualifies them to the next series uh i don't know if that's the case uh, i didn't see anything about that um so if someone does know they can correct me uh if i'm wrong um but i don't know Knox. i know you were watching a fair amount of uh the tournament over the weekend uh what were some of the big uh takeaways from you i would say in general this team has very good set, good set plays for the most part. Um, and the, the, it's kind of the problem with uh, game changers. A lot of these teams don't have like dedicated like coaches or like orgs backing them. So they don't have like times to like, they don't have like the resources and time to like be able to set practice up to transition into certain uh, aspects of the map and like certain plays and being able to adapt on the fly and so on and so forth. So a lot of the reasons like flies finding the success is because they have like two different coaches like backing them and helping everyone else on, on the team like hey here's when you need to be able to transition into this section of the map and here are the corners that you need to be covering things like that and honestly that's it, just the skill level difference that i'm noticing right mm -hmm. um it wasn't until like fly hit passion project um that i was like oh okay you're starting to get checked a little bit and then it's kind of same thing for Shopify, but I'll get into Shopify here in a second. But like, you can tell like Passion Project. I don't know what if they have like resources or backing or anything like that. But you can tell that team is a little more prepped for set plays, and it makes Fly think a little harder and how they want to execute certain uh, pushes and how they want to play the map in general from round to round. And at the end of the day, though, like Fly still came out on top. And then you get the Shopify, who is the current best game changers team in the world, and mm -hmm. it's crazy how much of a different level that team is right they they Oof. they're honestly insane. i would be very curious and i think they're i think they're going to compete be competing in this from my understanding but uh i'd be curious to see how they do in premiere because that's like the actual qualifier to get into ascension which eventually leads to the actual vct yeah i i wonder how well they will do in that yeah, yeah, yeah. um so yeah, that that's kind of the big thing with FlyQuest Red right now, and there's time to like develop this, right? They have the they have the staff, they have the resources, but a lot of it is just getting the people on this team to be able to react to certain counters or like certain like calls. Like Shopify, whenever like Fly is trying to like say they're on the offense, like Shopify will set up corners and just like completely hard deny Fly of like the original plan they had. And then Fly is very slow to adapt, and then they kind of just get cleaned out for the rest of the round. That's kind of the stuff that I was noticing. Maybe someone who has better at Valorant knowledge than me could probably go into more depth than that. But that's just the little things that I was noticing. It was mm -hmm. it was very like hard wall. Like, hey, you tried to execute this. Unless you like outshot me, you weren't gonna win that round. Mm -hmm. Something I definitely noticed throughout the series that I find really impressive um, is every time some like a round was going stressful. Or um whenever they pulled out like the timeout that they definitely like kind of reset themselves in those timeouts and like came back and it was a huge part of their ability to um make it against or like to beat passion project and phase shopify rebellion the first time and take a map off of them in their first matchup too and so i think that's a really good quality to have and it's just they kind of got to work on leveling up the rest of their mechanics and like those quick gameplays because like you said it was a lot of like hey i'm putting you in a trap that if you can't like outgun me you're not gonna win this and mm -hmm. so 
they they show a lot of good in-game adaptability and then in a particular map because ascent to me was kind of their crutch in some of the other qualifiers for the most part i saw a good amount like they got some new strats on ascent that i thought were really good so yeah they there's continuous development in this team which i'm very happy to see yeah, I've got the stats on uh, specific maps, both for main event and for everything from open qualifier to close qualifier to uh, main event for this first Man, you, series. You, you got everything. Nice. Well, thank you, uh, VLRValor.gg, uh, for providing all these amazing stats. Um, here's the big takeaway for us map-wise for this team. Split is our map. Uh, 5-0 on it across all of uh the entire event 2-0 on it in the main event but then the other one uh, and currently you just mentioned it um ascent in the main event went three and one on this map but across the entire uh series one from open quals to grand finals uh played 10 times eight and two uh on that map so did very very oh. well um in particular like split and ascent are uh some of our better maps the one that we s struggle on the most uh across the entire tournament is going to be lotus going yeah, three and four. yeah no lotus is rough for uh us. did not have winning round percentages on either attack or defense um 49 and 42 percent respectively percent respectively um and then in the main event, uh, it was even worse. Did not win a single map on Lotus, uh, and only basically won a third of our rounds uh, on Lotus. So, I, I I know we did not ban Lotus. Uh, I forget exactly what we were banning most of the time. Uh, so, that is, to me, it's a little concerning if, like, the team feels that they're even worse on another map than they are on Lotus. Because to me, they do not look good on Lotus at all. And I'm wondering if Lotus should start being the map ban uh, going into the next tournament. Um, so, but we'll see. Um, but as it is, anytime FlyQuest Red is going to be on Split or Ascent, I'm very happy and I feel very confident in their ability to win. Um, they did really, really well on that. Uh, Icebox no... was okay and uh, Sunset was mostly fine. Um, but, but looks pretty good. Does Valor GG show what our pick and ban for maps are? Uh, it shows, um, it does. So it'll show you agent. It doesn't, sh cause there's no, um, oh yeah, it does. It does show you what pick and ban is, but you have to go to each specific match. So like for grand finals, uh, What's interesting is Shopify Rebellion got two bans. So they banned Split and Bind, and then they first picked Lotus. Uh, and then we took Sunset and Ascent, and they took Icebox, uh, and Breeze was the last one. But we never even got to um, Ascent, unfortunately. I think we should have yeah. gone Ascent uh, with Map 2, uh, is my opinion, but uh, is what it is. Um, when we played them in Upper Finals, we banned Icebox... Uh, and then first picked Ascent, uh, and then then we banned Breeze. So we banned Icebox and Breeze. Uh, but that's interesting because, uh, you know, I don't know if it's because Shopify is really good on those maps, and, and we know that, because we did play on Icebox and Breeze throughout the whole tournament. Um, Haven, Fracture, and Pearl uh, we did not play on whatsoever, and I don't know... I don't believe I'm trying to remember what's in the map pool and what's not um, right now. I can't remember. Um, I, I wouldn't know either. <laughs> I will say here's what's interesting. Throughout the whole tournament, all 10 uh, rounds on all 10 maps on Ascent, we picked the same agent comp all 10 times. <laughs> so uh, we have a game plan. So yeah, Jet, uh, KO, Killjoy, uh omen and um uh sova so yeah dude speaking of jet dono nut had some crazy gameplay yeah this entire tournament she is top notch yeah top um, notch yeah final grand finals itself uh was definitely a bit tough uh sunset was our best map 
Uh, it did end up going to overtime. Uh, but, I mean, here's the big problem. Like, across the board, Fluorescent is just insane. Like, Fluorescent is just such a good player. Um, 22, 8, and 6. 26, 20, and 3. 29, 16, and 1 on the three maps. It's just, like, just so good. Um, so, yeah, definitely difficult. Starbound was really strong on maps 2 and 3. Um, Lace also was up there. Lace was our best player on Lotus and then number two on Sunset and Icebox. Um, so, so yeah, definitely um, some really strong performances from those folks. Uh, but, you know, I think just unfortunate that, you know, you want to do well in NA for Game Changers. You got to get past Shopify and it's going to be tough as long as Floor uh, is on that team. So to me, what that sounds like is we buy out floor. Uh, you know, if you can't, <laughs> if you can't beat them, buy them out. Uh, offer them a bigger contract. Uh, that's just my take on it. So, uh, any final thoughts on uh, Valorant Red before we close out the show tonight? Uh, they met my expectations, and I'm exa- they finished exactly where I was hoping they would. Uh, yeah. Top two. I, yeah. I think I even said top three, so they technically exceeded my expectations. I'm yeah. I'm very happy with them. They did there great. Perfect. I'm just looking forward to the next round of uh, open qualifiers. Yeah. I firmly believe that we can win one of them. Yeah. No, I'm, uh, I want to see us win uh, a qualifier for sure, um, and I want to see us keep pushing for top two, and ultimately I want to see us qualify for Game Changers uh worlds at the end of the season yes so that's the big goal right now all right second place in round one is a great way to start i completely agree okay well that's gonna be it thank you everyone for tuning into another episode of flight check playoffs start thursday that's only three days away and FlyQuest plays friday night at 4 p.m uh versus team liquid that's so soon from now uh, and, and very possibly later that night, too, for Challengers. And very possibly later that night, too. We will get you the schedule for Challengers once it is known. Uh, and the best way for you to find that uh, is to follow us on Twitter. For all of our instant reactions and thoughts, you can catch the show at Flight Check Crew, myself at Santos DB, Knox at Knox War with two R's, and Curly underscore double Q underscore. Uh, Make sure to hop into the Flight Check Discord as well, where all of our esports discussion and otherwise is taking place. Everything's going on in there. Uh, What was going on in there today? Hang on. I'm going to quickly look. Uh, (laughs) Good amount of things. Uh, uh, I posted how we did in our power rankings preseason. Someone posted Uh, some flatbread pizza. Road Roller just oh, pizza looked good. He sold some Funko Pops for a couple hundred bucks, uh, and we complained about the drive curse. So you know we did, uh, yeah. Oh, and Pickums. We did talk about the FlyQuest Pickum. Uh, we Pick'em. did talk about the mm-hmm. FlyQuest Pickums. Uh, our local our local flight checker Dean took first and won a jersey out of it. There you go, which is crazy. What a man. Um. So hey, speaking of jerseys, who's ready for that playoff jersey? Ooh, I didn't even think about that. Playoff jersey time, I baby. I'm going to be real. I don't know if we're going to get one. I don't think we're going to get a playoff jersey. I think we're getting an MSI jersey, though. Well, we got to get to MSI first. Uh, well, yeah. We've been we've been here before where we're the presumptive MSI nominees. Uh, and then Oppenheimer steals the show from us. So, you know, um, you know Oppenheimer Trust. being Trust. Cloud9 and Golden Guardians last year. Uh, all right. If you missed any part of the episode, the VOD will be up on YouTube tonight or tomorrow morning. If you're watching that, made it all the way to the end, and you're like, dang, really would have liked to catch this show live, uh, and participate in the Twitch chat and everything. Well, I've got great news for you. We broadcast the episode usually every Monday night, usually at 8 p.m. Eastern time, right here at twitch.tv slash flightcheckcrew. All right, Knox War. Any final shout outs or plugs before we wrap up? Uh, 
The last plug I'll say is we're doing another playoffs pick em in the FlyQuest, actual official FlyQuest Discord. Uh, this will be the playoffs pick -ems. So if you finish first in this, there is another 2024 Spring FlyQuest jersey up for grabs if you finish first. So get in there. Good luck. Have fun. Uh, hopefully you do better than I did. <laughs> Perfect. Curly, how about you? Oh, man. Um... Shout out to St. Patrick's Day coming up this weekend. You know, um, it's going to be I, I really hope we don't have to play Saturday um, because that's when my bar is due in our celebration. And uh, I will be enjoying myself yeah. considering that we're, we're doing some crazy drink deals, if I do say so myself. Ah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so I'm going to have a delightful, responsible Saturday afternoon slash night. Um, yeah. Shout yeah. out to that. Yeah, I'll be, uh, I've got something going on Friday night, so I will be able to catch, like, the first couple games, and then, uh, hopefully it'll be a clean 3-0 from there on out, and I won't miss anything. Uh, for myself, a uh, shout-out is gonna be to, uh, the Wheel of Time and Robert Jordan for, and I won't say which character, uh, but for writing a character that I have, I, I've never hated a character in a book more than I have this particular one. I'm not going to say who because it's a bit of a... I guess it's a bit of a spoiler, but they're just so freaking annoying. Uh, if you've read Wheel of Time, uh, shoot me a DM and we can commiserate on this person together. Um, but shout out to Robert Jordan uh, for writing the worst character of Wait. all time. Wait, um, is it Joffrey levels of Game of, on Game of Thrones? No, or? it's just like... They're, they're, uh, they're just so infuriating. Like, it's not like... They're not evil. They're a good person. But they're just like... They don't take any responsibility, right? It's always gotcha. other okay. people's fault. So, all right. So with that, we'll be back next week to discuss how the first couple rounds of LCS playoffs have gone. So I'll just say for now, stay safe out there, bite your teeth, don't forget to hit the head on the nail, and we'll see you all very, very soon. Adios, everybody. Have a good one, guys. Peace, y'all.